Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make your very own custom scaled drawing scrapbook scaled figure. Ugh, try and say that five times fast. So I guess I should probably say, what do I mean uh, or what is a custom scaled drawing first of all, and why would I want to make a scrapbook item out of a scaled figure? And I guess I wanna start here in layout to share with you or show you that if you're familiar with layout, then you probably have used the scrapbooks, hopefully, and you've probably seen within the scrapbooks, this really handy feature called people. And it's where you kind of place a scaled person, uh, it's a scaled drawing of a person right on top of your elevation or your section or something like that in layout. So there's 12 great ones already there, but what we're gonna do is look at how to make our own starting in SketchUp and going to layout. And it's a fun little process. So whether you use layout or not, you're actually gonna learn something, so stay with me. Let's get to it. So let's pop over to SketchUp. And in this case, I'm gonna use Heather and Lily here. I'm just gonna pretend like I really like Heather and Lily. I think having people with cats and animals in my layout drawings would be awesome. So I gotta make a, I gotta do a couple of things to prep her for layout, to become a scaled drawing scaled figure. So first thing I wanna do is switch my camera from perspective to parallel projection to that gets rid of that perspective distortion. And then I wanna set my view. I'm gonna come over here to not view, excuse me, my camera angle, which is a standard view to front. So I wanna look right at her. And then there's a reason why I wanna do that. And then now this is just for this process. I do not need her to be a face me component. So I'm gonna go ahead and explode her. Now, if all I wanted to do, if I like her colors, I can leave her alone, but because I'm going into construction documentation, having something like neutral colors or just having her be black and white, it's probably a good idea. Now, I'm gonna take this one step further and let's say that I really like her shape and I like her line work and everything like that, but I also just like her as a silhouette. So what I'm gonna do is copy her. I'm using the move plus modifier. I'm gonna make a copy of both Heather and Lily. And I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna get just her boundary. This is why I was saying that um, this is kind of a cool tip that even if you don't use layout, you might want to be able to get just the silhouette of a person. So the way I like to do this is I like to draw a rectangle. And the way I know that I'm drawing the rectangle around her exactly facing her is sometimes to actually use the modifier, click on her face in the middle somewhere and hold the option. I think it's on a Mac option and control on a PC modifier. And what that does, it means I'm making a rectangle from the middle rather from, you know, over the, from the edges. And so when, I'll make sure that I kind of cover her whole body here. And don't worry if it didn't cover everything, that's okay. What I really want is this kind of bounding box and then any gaps that there might be. So if, if the rectangle didn't fill those gaps automatically, I'll just go ahead and fill those with the line tool. And then I want to just grab those two gaps and this outer rectangle, you'll see why. I'm gonna use that same move modifier technique. I'm gonna pull her off to the side. And what I'm doing here is I'm now pulling not the inside of her, but I'm actually pulling everything around her off to the side. So I have the opposite of her. It's almost the inverse of a scale figure. I have the outside of her silhouette, but just a simple line across, depending on how complex the scale figure is, you may need more than one line, but a simple line ought to be enough to fill that face or heal that face back in again. And I'm going to do one more move copy. I'm going to move copy just that inside silhouette again. Triple click, delete, triple click, delete. I don't need those anymore. Now, before we get to layout, this is kind of an opportunity to think about styling and color. I want to have one version of Heather and Lily that is going to be just simple black and white line work. That'll look good with the black and white drawing. But I kind of want another version. If you go pop back over here into layout really quick, you'll notice that the scrapbook page, let me see if I can enlarge that for you so you can see it. They give you two versions, one that has lines and one like outer lines and inner lines and one that has just a basic, simple, kind of dark gray, transparent silhouette. So that's what I wanna do. I want one that's like that. So I'm gonna grab sort of a dark gray color, maybe make it somewhere around 50 or 60% opacity. I'll just kind of check that and see, okay, that looks good. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker and then go with that. I can always change it later, 
But for the most part, if you can get it good, looking good in SketchUp, that's kind of a good place to start. So once they're looking good, I can come over here and I'm just going to group these. I don't know why, I just because I'm out of habit. And then I'm going to make sure that my scene, I'm either going to add one or update one if I've already got one. And then I'm going ahead and save this file or save as if you want to, if you haven't saved it yet, and then send it to layout. It's asking me which size paper I want. I'm just going to go with letter landscape. We'll just kind of go with that. And here we are. So now we're in layout. Here is my SketchUp file. Uh, the first step I need to, before I can turn them into a scrapbook drawing or a scaled drawing, is going to be to give them a scale. So in here, it kind of comes in at a random scale. So I'm going to pick the closest one to what I think I need later, which is going to be one inch equals one foot, something that fills this page nicely. And the next step is going to be to switch from raster render mode to vector and that will knock out the sky. I'll check my, under my style. If a background is an option, I may want to turn that off. I'm not quite sure if that's going to solve my problem that, you know, I want to make sure that there's no background. Of course, I want just the character themselves. And then the last step in this process is to kind of change the bounding box so that it fits just Heather and Lily as much as it's kind of as close as possible. Uh, Cause we don't want to give too much space that we don't need copy and paste. When I copy and paste, there's my duplicate viewport, and that's because I want a separate one for both my silhouette version that we made uh, together when we were in SketchUp and for the sort of black and white line style version. So that's it. They're scaled, they are vector, and they are separate from each other. So they're ready to be exploded. This is where we're going to lose the link to SketchUp, but that's okay. We don't need it. There's really no point to having a link to the SketchUp model anymore. Once it's exploded, uh, that's it. So I'm going to double check here. She looks pretty good. Um, let's go with that. But we lost the line work on the black and white version of Lily. I'm not quite sure why that is. It may just be sort of how it com converts from the raster, the vector linked SketchUp file to the live drawing stuff. If that's the case, you can go into the drawing itself. You can kind of select everything, and then you can give uh, a stroke color if you want to give something like black. And again, if you want to change the stroke to something thick, or if you want to keep it nice and thin, depending on the scale of the drawing, you can do that. And I think she looks pretty good now. So I think we're good. I'm just going to double check to see if that background is there. Um, let's make sure that she's, I'm going to arrange, move her to the front, make sure she's got her fill. She does. Okay. So we're looking pretty good. So now from here, I'm going to give them, you know, a little bit of space. If I wanted to do this step again, I could do this if I wanted to create multiple versions of Heather and Lily on, which would be like, say, for example, uh, if I knew that I was going to have multiple versions at different scales, I could do that too before I create the scrapbook. But for now, I'm just going to keep these two because I can always change the scale later and say, okay, this is a good scale to use. So let's turn it into a scrapbook file, save not as a template, as a scrapbook. It's going to add, prompt me for a name, Heather and Lily, or you can just call it people or scale figs or whatever you want and click save. So there it is. They're saved now. I don't need this file. If I close it, it's totally fine. I do want to go back to my kitchen file. I accidentally closed that one. So here we go. I want to make sure I have my kitchen file because that was kind of the whole point. I wanted to put Heather and Lily as a custom scrapbook in my kitchen elevation. So let's go over here back to the scrapbooks. There should be a new one that comes up. You can see there's all these default ones, but there's a new one that's called Heather and Lily. So if I click that, it's going to be, it should be just the two scale figures that we made. So if I click on one Heather, here she is. Uh, she looks great. You know, just to compare, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the original people one and grab somebody like Aiden. He's coming in a little small. That's because by default, they're a different scale. Uh, but I could just move him back to one inch equals one foot. And there we go. So now Heather and Lily get to kind of hang out with Aiden in the kitchen while they discuss, who knows, cabinet paint colors or fixtures or what, so that they can, you know, get their kitchen remodel looking awesome. If I don't want to do the line work version of them, I can just delete those. I can grab uh, the uh, silhouette version of Aiden, do the same thing, change the scale back to one inch equals one foot so that he fits our elevation. And then of course, you'll know that Heather and Lily are still there. That's the whole point of making them a scrapbook. And I can bring her in 
and place both of them in. So that's awesome. I love having them in my drawing. I love the fact that it's custom. I love that I'm not limited to the scale figures that come by default in here. Um, and I also love some of the little tips and tricks that I picked up along the way uh, in order to be able to get to this point. So as I said, when I started this video, if even if you're not somebody who spends a ton of time in layout or you always need to have these sort of assets, these entourage things like Heather and Lily stored in a scrapbook, there's still some pretty cool tips and tricks along the way uh, from using the rectangle tool and the modifier to center it to figuring out how to get that silhouette so that you don't have that interior line work of your scale fig um, to also just understanding how to sort of the link between SketchUp and layout and whether or not you choose to break that and go into that scale drawing mode. And um, either way, some cool stuff for you to pick and cherry pick from for your workflow. So I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna say, let us know what you think as always in this video in the comments. We'd love to have these conversations with you. Love to hear your thoughts, love to hear your process as much as the process that I'm sharing. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, uh, share, subscribe with your friends. And um, I'll just uh, leave you there. I'll say thanks and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.